Hi there, welcome to the Schwoben's Nest. My name is Sandra and I'm so glad you're here. If you're looking for some last minute Easter decor ideas that are super quick, easy and turn out absolutely adorable, then keep watching. I'm starting out by using one of these little mini terracotta pots that you can get in a pack of three at the dollar store. And I'm going to be painting it with this pretty little sage color. I love this color for spring. I think it's just absolutely gorgeous. One coat will do just fine on this pot. While I wait for the pots to dry, I'm going to stain these little wood cutout bunnies. I got these in a pack from the Dollar Tree and I believe there's I think 12 or 15 to a pack. I'm just using a ready-made stain that I have in this little squeeze bottle. It's a combination of water, some burnt umber and black and gray paints. And anytime I want to change the color, all I have to do is add a different color of paint. I also have these three larger carrots. I believe I also got these from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to be cutting off that paper grass at the top. I tried pulling it out, but it was glued in there really well. So just cutting it out with the scissors is fine. I'll end up poking the hole a little bit bigger so I can get some of the faux greenery I want to use as stems for the carrots. I'm using some of this sprig that looks a little bit like a fern and I'm also going to be adding a little bit of boxwood and this is just going to give these carrot stems a lot of texture. Originally my plan was to use all six of these bunnies on the bottom of the pot. I ended up only being able to fit five of them but I'm going to put them facing together so they kind of look like they're little kissing bunnies and I'm just going to line them up all the way around the pot. They turned out really cute. I love this project. I think the pot would also look really cute with some of the little wood cut out eggs or maybe even some of the little mini carrots all the way around. To stuff the pot, I'm using some of this raffia and I'm just going to scrunch it up in my hands just so it gets almost into like a little ball but has a few strands hanging out. And then I'm just going to push it down, kind of getting all the little straggly bits tucked in too. I'm just going to place the carrots inside the raffia, add that last little wood bunny and a few little greenery sprigs. And this is a perfect addition to any vignette for Easter, but it's also suitable for spring too. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel and you like what you see so far, I'd love it if you could hit that red button. It's right here. For this project, I'm starting off by painting this letter holder. It came from a Scrabble game that I found at the thrift store. I'm also going to be using the letter tiles to spell out Happy Easter. I started giving this a really light coat of this blue color. Next, I grabbed a white chenille stem, I folded it in half and then just twisted the pieces together, then bent it to form this arch. I'm going to glue my little letters that spell happy right on top of this arch so it's nicely rounded. I thought it would be really fun to be able to place this on the back side of the letter holder and then have it kind of hanging in the air. Anyway, you'll see what I mean in just a second. I'm just kind of eyeballing where the center is and then I'll add some hot glue to the back of the letter holder and just glue the pipe cleaners in place. Then I'll place my Easter letters right on top of the letter tray and I'm going to also glue those in place because I don't want them to fall off. I decided to use the same stain as in the first project and I'll work on these two little mini wooden eggs and one bunny. The more I looked at that blue color, I just thought it was a little too bright. So I'm going to take a little bit of the stain and just go over it. And that just kind of dulls it down a little bit, makes it look more distressed and old and weathered with still a little touch of blue peeking through. 
using the same blue paint with a little bit of extra water on my brush i'm just going to be tapping it right on top of the eggs and the bunny and then i decided to bring over the letter tiles with the happy easter and put some blue on those as well and i think that just really made it look super cute Now to add all of these components together, I'm going to glue the bunny on the one side of the Easter word, and I'm going to glue the two little eggs on the other side. And they're kind of going to be in a little kitty wampus fashion. I'm not going to have them standing straight up. Then I'm going to add a little bits of greenery and some tiny little blue flowers that I have. And I think this turned out really sweet. Once I added the bunny and the eggs, it started to get a little top heavy and it started toppling to the back. So I added two tumbling tower blocks to the bottom and that helped it to stand up straight. And of course, no project of mine would be complete without a little bit of florals and greenery. I have some little heart shaped leaves here and some little blue flowers that I'm going to just add in between the bunny, the eggs and around the letters a little bit and I really love how this guy turned out and I hope you like it too. This project is the easiest of everything that I have today, super quick as well. I'm just taking three of these little Plaster of Paris bunnies. I'm going to go ahead and give each of them a couple of coats of a different colored chalk paint. This one I mixed with Antique Sky and I added a little bit of navy blue, so it's sort of a bluey green color. I'm going to do the other one in a light sage and the final one is going to be in a eucalyptus green. Once I'm done with that and they're fully dry, I'm going to give them a nice shiny glossy top coat and they look just like ceramic. For pennies on the dollar, I was able to create some beautiful high-end looking decor. I am super excited to share this hack with you. I am going to be printing on flower sack cloth fabric. I have cut out a piece that is much smaller than my printer paper. You can see that here. This is one of the tricks to remember. Make it much smaller than your paper because you don't want the feeder to catch hold of that fabric and then start tearing it up or possibly jamming it into your printer. Next, you're going to use some masking tape and make sure that you tape down every little bit of that fabric. It has to be taped down completely so there's no free edges hanging around. You also need to make sure that it's as flat as possible. You can see here that I pulled this one up because it had a little bit of a wrinkle in it and I smoothed it down again, making sure that again, everything is taped down. This will really help. If you wanted to iron your fabric, you could do that as well. I haven't tried it with anything thicker than the flower sack cloth, but I think this is absolutely amazing. One thing that I forgot to mention is that I put this on cardstock. I always have some pieces of cardstock in my stash. If you don't have white, it doesn't have to be white. It can be any type of cardstock, even a piece of scrapbook paper that is cut to size to fit into your printer. Of course, you won't be able to use the paper anymore, so just keep that in mind. Depending on your project, you might also want to make sure that your fabric is much bigger than your project. I'm using this tiny little embroidery hoop, so I just made sure that I had enough fabric. But you can see on the one side there, I got it a little bit close. So next time I've got to make sure that I put my image right smack in the middle. Now I'm going to take the larger hoop and just push it down on top of the smaller hoop and then screw it together to tighten it up.
to get a nice clean fabric cut, I'm using my fabric scissors. You can use regular scissors if you want, but I just always find that it's a little harder to cut a nice even piece. So fabric scissors are the way to go if you're cutting any type of material. Just make sure that you don't cut any paper or anything with your fabric scissors because that will immediately dull the blade and you'll be struggling again. With the leftover fabric, I just cut slits in the bottom and then tore it. I'm going to make three little ribbon pieces out of this. I'm also going to be adding some black and white striped ribbon and a black and white butcher twine. I thought I would quickly show you how I have been learning how to make a messy bow. I always start with a long piece of twine at the bottom in the opposite direction because that's what I'm going to be using to tie everything together. And then I just start layering and changing direction of each of them. And it just really doesn't matter how you do it. It just has to look a little messy, I guess. That's why it's called a messy bow. Then once everything's together, I just grab the two ends of the twine, tie it really tight in a knot. And I always like to shake up my bow just to kind of get it a little messier. I don't know, just to kind of pull things apart a little bit, but I'm always kind of bending it and fluffing it and shaking it. I glued the bow on top, added a flower with a button and some greenery, and I think this one turned out really pretty as well. I wanted to pop in here real quick and give you an update on my Etsy shop. I've got some new products out and thanks to you guys, I've got some really wonderful ideas for these wood slice engravings. You can see there's a bunny and a bumblebee. I have the cow, which I did in a previous video. I've also offered this chickadee and then I have a pig and a dragonfly. They are available in either the round wood slice or the cutting board. And you can also get them in plain wood or the white painted on top. The other addition is this sweet little farm kit. These are all mini little windmills, a wagon wheel, some critters, a couple of fence pieces, and this little barn that is about not quite four by four. And then you also get farm fresh in the wood cutout letters. So make sure you head down to the description box, click on the link to my Etsy shop, and go take a look at what I have. I'm also going to be offering all of the items that I've created in my last few videos, including this one, will also be up for sale on my Etsy shop. For this project, I'm using two of these large plastic eggs and I've put some skewers down in the bottom of them and glued them in place just so they can stand erect on this sponge and I've got some paper on top of it as well. I've been wanting to try this paint pour technique, so I've got some white paint at the bottom of this little cup. I'm adding some navy blue and then a couple of different shades of green. Using a skewer, I'm going to very gently just kind of swirl them around a little bit. I don't want to mix in the colors, but I do want to have a little bit of a pattern. Next, it's just literally pouring it right on top of the egg. The reason I have that paper there is so it catches any of the excess paint. This takes a really long time to dry. I let mine dry overnight. And when I did the second one, I did it a little bit better. So practice makes perfect. I should have poured this one a little bit slower and just kind of gone around in a circle to make sure that all of the paint is dispersed evenly around the egg, but you can already see the pretty pattern that it's getting. So what I did now was just kind of let it sit and ooze all the way down and I'll start on my next one. I'm just using chalk paint and acrylic paint, what I happen to have in my drawers, but I know there are some paint pour kits out there. Whether or not they work any differently, I couldn't tell. But what I'm doing here on my second one is I added some greens to it. And I added the green into the cup first, and then I added some white at the end. So the darker color ends up coming out and being more prominent than the other egg, which had the white in first. So 
it's just an experiment. <laughs> they turned out beautiful. I really love them. I will probably try this technique on some other things. I think I'd like to try it on a canvas maybe next time. But I really think these are a fun way to just dress up some eggs for Easter. For this project, I'm using this really chunky wooden bunny that I got at Dollarama last year for $1.25. I'm just going to remove the front piece and the sticker. For springtime this year, I did grab a little pack of six by six scrapbook papers and they're called plaids and there's so many different pretty colors for spring. I'm going to be using this blue and purple one and I'm going to use a glue stick and just put that on the bunny at the top. Then I'm going to use a solid blue color for the back, but I'm going to leave the middle portion of the bunny, the sides of him, just that rustic brown color. Once both papers had a chance to set up with the glue, I'm just taking an emery board and filing off any of the excess paper. I'm also going to bring out a little bit more of the paper just by going a little bit flatter on the top. And a couple of areas of the bunny the blue bunny on the other side got a little schmutz on them so I decided to just take my emery board and sand that down a little bit too and give them both a little bit more of a faded look. I had a package of these little wooden tags so I cut out a piece of the plaid paper and I'm going to use the glue stick again to apply it to the front of the tag. Then I'm just going to take a little piece of scrap cut out wood that I have left over. It has sort of a carrot shape to it. I'm going to trim it and then add a few little green sprigs and then glue that right on top of the plaid paper. I tied the tag around the bunny's neck and he looks adorable. This is another super quick DIY. I'm using one of these little wooden frames that you can get at Michael's. I'm not going to stain it or anything. I like the wood look on it. And then I created this little spring market printable with a little baby chick on it. And yes, this will be available on my website as a free printable for you. I'm just going to use a glue stick and stick it right inside. I noticed that I put it in a little bit off center. So to fix that, I'm going to use a little piece of wood, glue that down into the bottom corner of the frame, and then add this little wooden cutout egg from the Dollar Tree right on top. Since the flowers around the chick are purple, I'm gonna take these little bits of lavender that come from stems that I got at Walmart, and I'm just going to glue a few around the egg. And this project is done really fast to do this one. I was so excited when I found these little mini rolling pins at a craft supply store here in Ontario. And I will have these available on my Etsy shop if you're interested. They'll be in sets of two. They're about five inches in length and I think probably only about an inch in diameter. I'm going to give the handles this coat of pretty blue. At first, I was going to leave the center portion of it the natural color, but when I used my Sharpie marker to write the word hop, like you see here, it bled all over because I hadn't sealed it up. So I decided to paint it white with some white chalk paint and then write the word hop again. And I just did it freehand and added some little bubbles to the ends of each of the letters and now I've just got a little piece of black and white twine I'm going to tie a cute little shoestring bow with that add one tiny little white flower and this project is finished too
I really hope you enjoyed my last minute, super quick and easy Easter DIYs and got inspired to do a little last minute crafting yourself. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up that gets me noticed more on YouTube and helps my channel grow. If you haven't subscribed, that black arrow will point you in the right direction. Bye for now.